This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 655. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, <laughs> ready to talk professionalized wrestling here. I'm sorry, was that a little loud on the oh, intro? Yeah, shit. <laughs> that was very loud. You both blew our ears out, man. I was like, my eyes were like, what? That's right. We got a crew with us, first of all, from Beacon, New York. I forgot where you were for a moment. He is the only Mayhemmer with a future endeavor letter from the WWE. He is mad. Mike? Oh, man. Someone, someone backstage picked up their pen this week. So it's yeah, weird. so it's we're weird. we're getting the SmackDown reports. So it sounds like there's a lot going on here. Someone actually took the glass cleaner to the dry erase board on both shows. Okay, wiped, wiped everything off and just started over. Just started over, clean slate, clean slate. Yeah. Just like it's just like New Blood era, right? Just a clean slate. Um, no, decidedly less Billy Kidman. Okay, that's probably for the best. Although he's still around, isn't he? I'm never no. sure. I mean, he was never in TNA, so I, that's not a qualifier anymore. <laughs> Anyways, we have a crew. You heard them after I kind of blew their eardrums out. <laughs> we have members. Uh, let's see. Uh, three fifths of OSHA Inc. with us. First of all, do, 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 Dan Sandwich, who's uh, holding the trophy right there from the <laughs> Black we Diamond did it, Wrestling. Boys. Black Diamond yeah. Wrestling. We did it again. That's the Royal Eight Cup. It was a tag team tournament. This is the tournament that changes every year. And look at the Wheaties box. We got a picture of the Wheaties box. Actually, I think I think the picture you're going to see. Wait, wait, there's Wheaties in there. He's digging in. This is a functioning <laughs> Wheaties Dating box, in. ladies and gentlemen. Wait, That's it. the sounds of cereal. That's not Wheaties. Those are Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> What's wrong with those Wheaties? Oh my God. <laughs> because Cocoa Puffs. What's wrong? It sounds like Cocoa gravel. Puffs are nothing but sugar. That is not. Safe that for is, the consumption of humans. That's definitely I, not safe for me. I took <laughs> the Wheaties. I took the Wheaties out and replaced it with cocoa pops. Because <laughs> it tastes better. <laughs> I like the chocolate milk. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, he, he brought milk too. Yes. Ronnie Starks is with us. He's got hey, milk. Yeah, got milk. Dan does. He's like he's completely <laughs> doing this. We're gonna need to zoom in on Dan after he takes a big gulp and have him go gut milk. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. I had to change my name to Dan Cereal. Dan Cereal with us. <laughs> this is how we're starting the show. He's going to eat cereal on the air on the podcast. Yeah, it looks, that's welcome, great. welcome to ASMR Mayhem. Here, get a little close <laughs> to the mic. Get the get the crunching. Uh, get the crunching in the mic there. there oh, if, uh, no. If Tony Johnson could chew gum into a microphone, Dan can chew uh, cereal into a microphone. Ronnie Starks with us as well. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How about you, my friend? <laughs> All right. It's he's still drinking cereal over there. <laughs> We're just gonna go cereal camp every, here and there. <laughs> And of course, new OSHA member Tatiana Rose, who came in, in safety vest. Yes, of course. By the always way. prepared. Always. She, she, she's always. The, she's the only one that came in gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do everything around here, guys. I'm so proud of you. Bring it in. <laughs> We'll talk a little bit about exactly why you guys have a cup, and maybe we'll just leave to your imagination why he's eating um, not Wheaties out of it right there. <laughs> Fantastic. And of course, producer Missy is here, who unfortunately we, we confused last week because we named the, the show uh, Lacey Evans TED Talk, and she thought I accidentally uh, uploaded an awesome cast to the Wrestling Mayhem <laughs> show feed. So I apologize for any confusion any of you guys had out there as well. Uh, so, But this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, where you can find links. You know what? During this, I'm just going to leave it on Serial Cam just, while I'm doing just the wait, intro. Just wait, just wait till we call this week's episode Raw v. SmackDown. Will it blend? <laughs> there we uh, go. Where, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show, where you can find links and subscribe to us on podcast and video form or look us up on your favorite platform he's going somewhere where's he going <laughs> you know, oh yeah he's putting he's being responsible and making sure the milk is back in the fridge uh you can also drop us a line at that email address 
times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. Check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page and group. And the uh, page is where we are live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook Live. If you catch us on the Sorgatron Media, uh, social media streams, anywhere else, uh, hop over to the Facebook page because we have a, that's where we are paying attention to the chat room as much as we can with all this going on. Uh, and we'll, we'll roll back to serial cam for you guys on video. <laughs> uh, <laughs> eat away. Get, get the, that's how you become a big, strong championship winning wrestler right there. Right, say Dan Sandwich. I, I got to get now your sandwich sandwich. I, I, I'm going to say both tonight. I apologize. I'm, I'm still I'm still relearning. Uh, so, uh, also, uh, please uh, drop us a line, or uh, actually, uh, check out our streaming partners at the 405media.com that carry us at 9 p.m. Eastern time every night, seven days a week, or a midnight Eastern time. What is it? 9, 9 p.m. Pacific time and noon. Yeah. I'm sorry, midnight yeah. Eastern time. Yes, Just I'm sorry. Before you fall asleep. There's cereal eating happening here, and I'm very confused right <laughs> what now. What time is Ryan, it? Open Yo. your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how we get ants. That's, <laughs> that's how you get ants. <laughs> I got it between the fingers. That's, that's yeah. how you get fire ant, green ant. Sorg, we should have used this for booking. Yeah, we should have, right? We could Sorg, we could have just thrown some cereal on the floor. You would have had the colony in for a whole podcast. Yes. Anyways, um, <laughs> the hell was I doing? Uh, <laughs> Patreon is a Patreon time. Uh, Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show, where you guys can support the show if you find some value in some cereal eating podcasts, <laughs> uh, including our friends at the Fan of the Show one dollar level. Bo Diggity, Woo! Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby F J Town, and Tina Keys at the Pocky Club five dollar level, uh, which will get um, a lot of other fun conversation with uh, OSHA here. Uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling, Bradley Brothers, Doc Remedy, Dave Potter, the Tiny Shutter Podcast, and Kyle Turner is the newbie on there. And thanks to our Pizza Club ten dollar level out uh, with the Wrestling Revolution, uh, Tony Garcia that does our amazing graphics for Mayhem Mania. So uh, first off here. I think most of us saw, well, fi- finally, finally, after a wide release, I think you were talking about this a year ago, where Paige was coming on the screen and, and in the middle of Mania and scaring the crap out of us about it. Paige here! Paige here! Um, <laughs> but Fighting With My Family uh, came out, the latest WWE Films uh, release, uh, and it was a comedy about Paige's life. And like I said, I think most of us saw it here, if that's correct. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on it, um, since uh, I would just imagine most most big wrestling fans probably saw it this weekend. So, spoiler alert! Well, spoiler alert is you know Paige's career. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, and spoiler alert: this movie does not address a lot of it. No, 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 it doesn't. Um, <laughs> it addresses one night of her career. Basically. That's about it. Yeah, that sounds about right. And, but I mean, it's it, it's boiled down to be a comedy and accessible, right? Oh yeah, no, yeah. the rest of it was the million dollar tough enough challenge. Kind of, yeah, kind of. Um, I, I I do wonder if NXT like in training does a lot of beach competitions <laughs> in this one. I feel like oh, that no. doesn't happen. <laughs> I've never seen a giant horn on anything in NXT. Yeah, so. yeah, that was interesting. Who, um, uh, who were the three girls that she came up with? I'm so we we found an article where she's talking about the movie and she said the three girls are not there anymore. Okay. So we know it's not like current main roster people. Okay. I wonder if one of them was Emma considering I think one of them was supposed to be Emma, yeah. Yeah, because uh, she definitely did a lot with Emma down in NXT. In fact, I saw her and Emma have a match against the Bella Twins years and years ago before they were up on the main roster. Uh, it was like a live show down in West Virginia and and from what I heard, they just they had a lot of programming together, so I wouldn't be shocked if it was Emma as one of them. Yeah, like I could see maybe Emma, Summer Ray, and Eva Marie. No, no not Eva, Eva Marie. No. Eva Marie was not around until like a couple of years ago, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, because she, she yeah. was. Wait, she came in. Was she a total? No. Yeah, she came in through Total Diva, Divas. Eva came in via Total Divas. Via Total Divas. Then she started to train. Oh, no, wait. She and JoJo were like the final winners of uh, the Diva Search, I believe, before they no, finally got rid of no? No, they're, they're, no, they literally just came in for Total Divas. Oh. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I thought there was like something else that like drew them in, but 
Yeah, nope. no, that sounds about right, too. No, just a casting call for uh, Total Divas. Wow. And then JoJo dated PJ Fleck. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> also, JoJo and Bray Wyatt. Wrong that is also still weird. Still also kind of weird. <laughs> just didn't see Were that you coming. at WrestleMania last year? Uh, we went to WrestleMania together. That's right. <laughs> Did you guys uh, just have a moment? So, uh, yeah. remember when we ate dinner with uh, with JoJo? Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> all right, so wait, 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 wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here's, here's a funny story. Let's let's back it up a little bit. Uh, oh, I want to point out, guys on audio, on audio Ronnie Sarkis looks so relaxed over uh, there. I'm, I'm, I'm almost <laughs> falling asleep. It's fantastic. I'm just going to come here to sleep on this couch. It's probably the best damn night of sleep in my life. It's a very comfy couch. But, uh, all right. So, what was the rest Come for the podcast. Stay for the nap. What? What was the restaurant called? Oceana Grill. Yeah, it was this. It was this really good seafood place. It was fantastic. Yeah, we're putting over Oceana Grill in in uh, New Orleans. I mean, it sounds we, similar to OSHA. It does. We ate there like four times. Hmm. Like no shit. Jeez. And uh, so we went, and the table over from us, it was Bray Wyatt, her, uh, Bo Dallas, and Bo Dallas's girlfriend or wife. And was there anybody else? Two other jabrones. Two other jabrones. So they're sitting across the table from us. Our bu- your buddy Kurt. I was not our buddy Kurt. Your buddy Kurt. Uh, he's a weird cat. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he he got up. He's like, I need to make a phone call. He got up, went outside of the patio, stood there, and stared at JoJo <laughs> for I'm going to say a good 15 minutes. It was like a good 15 it minutes. Was, yeah, yeah. That's he accurate. like not even like unnoticeably awkwardly staring at Jojo and you and I look at him we're like what the fuck Bray Wyatt shot Kurt a look like death man <laughs> because she said she's like hey he's still staring at me and he's just like Phew. like Bray Wyatt is like the last person you want giving no, you a death glare I'm he's surprised so he didn't creepy. teleport over there and like just the funny thing he, about Bray Wyatt is when right? he's in a restaurant, he's in gimmick because, like, when he's in the ring, he's just wearing like pants and a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. So you see him at a restaurant, and he's just wearing pants and a t-shirt. He, yeah, basically looks like he does. It it's not ring. like I don't recognize Randy Orton not in skivvies. You know, it's just like that's that's what he looks like. Yeah, he, yeah. he was just wearing his black craft and chilling, you know, and <laughs> and then uh, Kurt just you know awkwardly stared at her for a good 15 20 minutes pretending to be on his phone and uh to be fair who wouldn't stare at jojo no yeah no i would but not awkwardly for 20 minutes yeah if you're gonna stare at somebody you have to be subtle about it oh he wasn't there there was nothing subtle about that shit i don't say that much i, I thought it was funny because we thought he was gonna get beat up by Bray Wyatt. <laughs> it's uh it just it never happened wow <laughs> we have plenty of stories from uh New Orleans. <laughs> Most yeah, of the, the the only wrestlers I I saw most of my wrestlers while I was walking down Bourbon Street. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time. Uh, was that how it looked when he was there? I ran into Kenny I'll Omega at, at one point. The time, I didn't even notice. <laughs> Freaking uh, Kenny Omega was running down the street. And, uh, <laughs> really? Yeah, what? he was. The marks were chasing him. Yeah, they were. He was. He kept running away and looking back, running, looking back, and the marks were like, like running after him. We're like, run, Kenny. So, <laughs> trying to bring it back around to the movie. Um, it was mentioned that um, apparently Tessa Blanchard was uh, the Paige stunt double. This is, this is what I wanted to talk about. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Well, what, yeah. what, what about it, Mike? So, um, I had to do a little bit of business looking up uh, uh, Zelina Vega's time in WWE. Mm-hmm. And I forgot that Zelina was playing AJ Lee in the uh in the movie i feel like this is before we even saw her on nxt is that right actually yes, yes. well before well she before. did a good aj impression yeah, yeah she, she did like she sounded just like her like she the, well she, her and aj are good friends okay okay makes sense her and her and aj are good friends um because i think selena was still with aries at the time mm-hmm. and aries and punk i think were close so but um but yeah so watching that because i watched the whole segment like you know, Rock comes out, he, like, films a bunch of reaction shots and everything, calls yeah. CM Punk, all that stuff. Then um, Zelina comes out as AJ, and Tessa Blanchard comes out as Paige, who looks nothing like the actress they got to play Paige. No. But, um, yeah, I watched them do the whole match, and it's it was really interesting seeing 
what they used from it and specifically how Tessa Blanchard, like in the few close up shots that she's in, always has her hair covering her face. Hmm. It's very because because she had the like dark black hair and everything. So yeah. if you don't see the face, yeah, you buy that's Paige. Yeah. Yeah. But, absolutely. But Tessa Blanchard. Or at least the actress is, playing Paige. Yeah. But Tessa Blanchard is incredibly tan compared to both Paige and the actress. Well, they probably mm-hmm. they probably uh, reverse great chant her they yeah they probably used like an incredibly light foundation and just like powdered it all over her yeah that's 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 doing um but i think they also might have done some digital stuff too because the close-up shots of the actress like you still see the background there like that's i think would be a lot of green screen stuff so i mean they still because because the actress was never there the actress never showed up to get really close-up shots or anything weird that is weird um because yeah that's what i'm saying like it's it's a real it's a real i would i can't wait to see when that movie comes out on dvd i want to see the making of i want to see the making of that that match because um, it's, ironically it's none of the shots had any areas upper deck tarped off hey people actually CGI still up peopled into the stands yeah it was also what the staples center that they shot yeah. it in uh, uh, for, uh alex cars in the chat room i believe was there that night when they filmed that um and was it maybe after a summer slam or something big i think it was one of those kind of four night stands yeah, they might have done this SummerSlam. so yeah. i think there's like the opportunity for them to have a full house was was kind of uh, a bit more um uh, was it maybe after the san jose mania is that See, no it was after no. summer slam it was after summer slam in la okay i think or like Survivor Series or something like that. That's I bet it was a Survivor Series actually. So so that that probably helped out too. But yeah, and uh, it was funny because like they, you could tell they weren't actually doing a match because they definitely like botched some spots and they had to get the angles right. Mm-hmm. So so did it come off like when you're watching the footage? Like is it is it like look like they just did a match and filmed it? Kinda, kinda, kinda. Not re- not really because you can tell. Like they're not at, like a like Zelina's never actually trying to win, right? Right. Like they're they're just setting up spots. Yeah, which it's, is funny because the the match that they do is like twice as long as the actual match that happened on the <laughs> page. Yeah, was it just one move? Like just... basically, basically, it was, it was your classic old divas match at the time. You got two minutes. Oh, ago. I mean, it was also a date. It was it was a debut match for Paige, so True. they didn't want to do too much so they could build to a rematch. I actually yeah. remember watching that debut and just being like, "I have definitely seen this woman somewhere before," because <laughs> this was obviously after the West Virginia show that I was at, mm-hmm. and I'm like, "Okay, this is really cool." Okay, I've heard about Paige. Okay, okay. Oh, oh! Then suddenly Paige is champion. Mm-hmm. Then I thought about it a little bit more, and I'm like, "Oh my god, I have seen her before." What was the West Virginia show that she was at? It was a very long time ago. It was just a house show, honestly. But it had a it had some really interesting matches. Okay. Uh, the Shield had a match against Team Hell No and John Cena. And fun fact, I got a very strange look from Roman Reigns because I yelled at him. <laughs> <laughs> he like got taken out. Uh, he got taken out with one punch, and I, for some reason, had thought that was really dumb. So I just went, come on, Roman, you used to be a football player. You can take harder than that. Get back in there. And I just see him go like this. <laughs> Every time I look over there, he just like gives me that like that look when he like, takes a punch. <laughs> what, are you using a straw to get the milk out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Darn, that, that's, the, that's the preferred method. Like that's why they built that's why they made those bowls that have built-in straws in them it's like i somehow the cup is reflecting into the camera and i'm getting some weird artifacts <laughs> <laughs> or maybe that's just the fake wheaties i don't know i don't know what's happening here that's um great. Well, uh, producer missy is doing some homework here <laughs> This is where we're positioning the cup. Um, uh, producer Missy, and I think our friend of mainstream media is walking in, too, getting ready for Mayhem Mania. Uh, so apparently, so this article that uh, she's pulling from says that boot camp style training scene seems to be a bit of, bit of a nod to NXT, um, the old NXT, Mike. Yeah, the game show. The game show version of it. So mm-hmm. Al- yeah. Also the Tough Enough thing, because the Tough Enough thing was literally on a beach. Yeah, well, yeah, like an entire season of it. Um, Interesting. 
So not 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 that tough enough. I'm talking about the one with Miz and Daniel Pewter. Yeah. Oh, the one where he met Maurice. I think. Uh, no, he met Maurice at the Diva Search. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Wasn't the the hundred thousand dollar tough enough? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, that was good. <laughs> yeah, no, that that had a lot of stars. Yeah, probably, had, uh, probably make had a... Ryback, that the boogeyman, that oh, Brian yeah. Cage, Miz, yeah, Miz, um, uh, Gallows, Gallows was in there. Gallows was there. There were a lot of guys that were in that mm. that you don't remember that were in it. Um, according to, and I don't know, according to this article, but I don't. I think it was just kind of supposing things than than actually factual. Um, saying that the out, outfits worn by uh, the the three divas. Um, in NXT, resemble Eva Torres, Kelly Kelly, and the original cheerleader outfit worn by Alexa Bliss. Mm. That doesn't seem accurate at that, all. That doesn't seem direct for these. So, I, 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 I can't imagine them. One of them isn't supposed to be Emma. And sex tape, uh, yeah, they're probably Emma. Um, and <laughs> there was a lot of sexual references. There was a lot movie. of sexual reference in that movie, but. Um, but you know, obviously, a lot of that, like, I don't remember Rock throwing somebody off a cage no. at all. Also, no, Rock did, did not have a hand at probably at any point in Paige's career. <laughs> also, That's... there's ne- also there's not a thirty foot cage. No. Like, if you're gonna do that, have that be Mick Foley, if anything. <laughs> yeah. Was yeah. Uh, was Vince Vaughn's character real? Who was he? Um, mm-hmm. not really. I think he was supposed to be just like an amalgam of all the guys that worked at NXT. In my mind, he's Hugh Morris. I think he's pretty funny too. Yeah, he did a yeah. good job. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're being paid. Damn it. Damn it. What? I am looking at the last thing and, and I'm reading and hosting at the same time, so I got to catch up. Multitasking. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but no, there's some, in, in, there's some uh, uh, in, informational stuff in here. You know, of course, Sarah Del Rey, Bill DeMott were probably uh, trainers at the time, Dusty Rhodes. Um, so uh, before his death in 2015, that was way before. So yeah, the thing is, like I say, it was accessible. You know, it's probably more interesting to do a movie around these, these beach exercises than, um, you know, um, you know, let me go through and the actual rise of women's wrestling. Then the actual rise of women's wrestling, yes. <laughs> so, but uh, but all together, it's getting it's getting good reviews, and uh, it hasn't even opened in England yet. That's crazy, right? So it's probably gonna yeah. do. Pretty, oh, I imagine no. it do pretty well, good over there. I wonder if her father is gonna sell tickets for it. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> oh, that guy did a really good job playing her father. The guy who was in uh, Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. He did a really good job playing your dad. Yeah, I, it was a it was a good representation of indie wrestling. It really was. Like if you, you feel like you've met that guy, or you guys have probably worked for that guy, <laughs> or maybe you currently work for that guy. Did the blind kid ever make it? Uh, they said the blind kid actually became a professional wrestler. I yeah, wanna, that's like, so who is cool. Like, I, don't I, I want a movie. That. I want to see him work. I want that movie. I want the blind kid movie, yeah, and right. I want to yeah, see him in a real match. On the blind I want to see him in a real match against Zach Allen. Oh yeah, dude. While we're at it. That's okay. it. That's gonna be my match I'm putting on the car. <laughs> that's right. that's right. I I should probably use my eliminator on the blind kid from the page movie, right? Just to get this out of the way. Uh so it's anyway, probably not a bad idea. That's probably not a bad idea. Just just for his and our safety. Um anyway, speaking of safety. You can check out our friends at <laughs> OSHA Inc. MT OSHA. There are many different names. I think I have some MTO matches on there somewhere too, technically. Uh, we can check out all that at IndieWrestling.us, IndieWrestling.network. You can sign up, get your free trial, free seven day trial over there at IndieWrestling.network. You can check out some Black Diamond Wrestling, full shows exclusive to the network, as well as uh, our friends Renegade Wrestling Alliance, new show featuring Teddy Long. Yes, Teddy Long. You've probably seen the clip go around of Teddy Long and Rev Ron Hunt making an awkward gestures to his own mother. Uh, you'll see the yeah. full show, including a match with D'Lo Brown and Jock Sampson as part of that, too, uh, coming up on the network, as well as currently in editing. I swear I'm going to finish it probably in the next 24 hours. Uh, IWC's Cold Blooded <laughs> with Glacier featured on there. Uh, and uh, so much more. So uh, it's secretly a college student, and it's always behind on the deadlines. That's self-imposed deadlines. Hey, you, you said- <laughs> Did anybody ever unfreeze the main event? That's what I want to know. Did anybody unfreeze the main Did event? Did anybody unfreeze the main event? Well, or when are they were they? Still they that's the a good question. Well, when were they frozen? They were- sure froze the main event. You didn't. Yeah, see yeah. It was it was after the uh, the show in the locker room? Yeah. No, uh, no I didn't it's very unfortunate. 
But when did it happen? It's what I'm. In, in the, the locker room after the match last mm-hmm. Saturday. Well, night? apparently like, they weren't frozen because they were at QCW the next day. So very nice, very nice. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Good to know. Confirmed. The main event is okay. Not frozen from their experience with Glacier. Uh, go check out their social media <laughs> well, for the video with that. I'm really glad you kept kayfabe on that too. That was, uh, that was a great job. <laughs> <laughs> they came back. And they beat up my guys. What can I say? <laughs> It doesn't count across like state lines. It's different, <laughs> different world. Just like Chris, Laru- Chris Larusso's like like hugging people uh, in West Virginia, and then wants to kick them in in PA. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's just you know, it's it's different different universes, right? Um, state line canon, state line canon. <laughs> but you can check out all of it indie wrestling dot us indie wrestling dot network. Go support indie wrestling. All right, uh, so let's talk about this cup. That's. <laughs> That you that you finished at least one meal out of. I mean, I guess it's only one girl, one cup today. Yes, so uh, we're good. Two guys, one cup. No, uh, <laughs> that that's a whole different video for a whole different other group of people. So so there's this Royal Eight tournament, and I've only experienced the last two years of it. But this uh, this is a kind of a longer history, right? Like last year was kind of the Haas tournament. You know, the big guys, I think Beastman won it. Mm-hmm. Uh, this year, it was a tag team tournament, and you guys won it. But it's, it's been several things over the years, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've done Royal 8 for like a decade now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's been a while. It's just like a different feature tournament. Like, where, where are the, some, some of the other tournaments they've done as well, part of that? Uh, the year before that, Edric Everhart won the cup. Who won the year before that? This was only the second year I was in it. I don't, I don't know about any of the other ones. I mean, I, you'd have to ask uh, Boss Man. The boss man. The boss man. Get Rick Diamond in here. Yeah. (laughs) Where you at, Rick? We need need what's going on. So you have a new member Mm -hmm. since last time. You may may recognize her from our uh, Brohemoth Invitationals, but uh, explain what happened here. Well, uh, me and Annabelle were in the first round of the Royal Eight tournament, and we were up against MT OSHA. It was uh, Dan Sandwich and Dustin Vane, and uh, we lost. And then we got backstage, and after a lot of shenanigans during intermission, uh, you know, Ronnie pulls us aside and he's like, "Hey, listen, uh, I know, I know we kicked your ass out there, but you do have a lot of promise. So, what do you think? We, do you want to help us out tonight? You know, open up some new doors, some new opportunities?" And we're like, "What do you have in mind?" And they say the rest is history. Yeah, the rest there is history. <laughs> Came out, helped out, or distracted, or however you want to put it, uh, in that last bit. And also the greatest um, celebration, I think, in independent professional wrestling history went down after that. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I've never seen anything like this, but... Uh, there you are. There you if you're on video, there's you, like Jelly Stomp and uh, Gavin Jacobs there in the corner as you're uh, tying them with a zip tie, uh, which I, I understand Ronnie is really good at zip ties. Uh, <laughs> I put the zip tie on backwards. Good. <laughs> I don't think he noticed, though, so I think it's fine. No, nope, no. Nope. <laughs> He, he never noticed. He never got free. Uh, it's I like, mean, it's it, like an elephant. They don't know they can break the chain if you put it around their, you know, their wrist. In my defense, <laughs> I only had so much time to put that on him, so uh, I had to make it count somehow. <laughs> oh, I fan. think he was also trying to get the uh, two women off of him. I don't think he's ever been beat down by girls before. I don't oh. think he's ever been had two women on top of him before. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, but um, you guys already <laughs> drank from the cup. And now you're eating out of it. Mm. <laughs> There's a good shot of uh, uh, Ronnie there on video going to town on that. I did the, I did the Triple H. <laughs> you did the Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, um, but uh, yeah, so uh, what, what the, 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 did you guys do anything else special to, 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 to celebrate here? I mean, obviously, you got your box of Wheaties um here as represented here in the, in the studio well uh, i don't know if you saw the video we did but uh cupid uh, Kid cupid Q-Puck, he uh he came into the thing you and said uh, Q-Puck? yeah Q-Puck. <laughs> big Q-Puck. that's what we call him now uh it was really funny because when we did the video uh we brought him in and he awkwardly stood there for a good two minutes and then he's just like they did it again and we're like yeah <laughs> <laughs> tell us how that started ron all right, the we did whole, it again. We did give, it again give the we did it again story. All right, so the we did it again story. Uh, we were in a building in uh, Wheeling, 
mm-hmm. that we used to run at and uh cupid was in a group i called the industry and uh we won the tag titles it was him and destin vane that won the tag titles and uh i was trying to cut a promo and uh he just started kept screwing up yeah i kept screwing up so uh he just started screaming he we did it again and he would like screw my ear and shake me he's like we did it again <laughs> it's like the greatest promo ever because he he saved it and it was great and i just stared i gave him that death glare i'm like what the shit <laughs> and uh it was great we did it again it's kind of been like a, a, a long running inside joke i guess yeah just between that's us. what i was trying to figure out i'm like did they win last year i don't remember doing that. <laughs> like, what is there is there like some like some history i don't know from this company or something but it wasn't any of that at all no it's no. inside joke yeah. it's a completely inside joke that completely you're inside joke. yelling yeah. in front of 100 people it has nothing to do with anything <laughs> <laughs> the first time that we do everything we did it again <laughs> <laughs> Is that because time is a flat circle? What? Is that because time is a flat circle? Oh, no. Uh-huh. I don't know. No, let's know. not go there. Is love a battlefield? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, it's good to see you guys are, are uh, uh, flourishing as uh, as OSHA Inc. You've dropped the MTO. I need to find out when you did that, too, for all my notes. <laughs> Wait, we did when, that? When are we... Oh, we're officially... Ocean Inc. right now, right? I think so. Like, we're officially Ocean Inc. Have, okay. have the papers come in? Are you officially incorporated? I mean, I have about a thousand hours in as a uh, Ocean representative. That's good. Oh, God. I'm going to have to start that. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you the paperwork. Yeah. We'll get you right on there. We'll have to get Annabelle the paperwork, too. Well, you and, know, uh, you're going to have to get me uh, different paperwork than what you would have to get for yourself or Annabelle because I'm in the theatric version of Osha. Oh, this is true. I'll have to get her the uh, theatrical version of the notes. Of the contract shenanigans. <laughs> I couldn't think of the words I was going to say. So, yeah. All right. Fantastic. Uh, well, go check out everything again over on NandyWrestling.us and, and go to the show. You guys are having a show this weekend. Mm-hmm. It's Take Down. Uh, it is Take Down. <laughs> you know what? They should take down that awful uh, promo that uh, <laughs> Gavin Jacobs and his tag team partner did. <laughs> oh, oh that's what I'm asked. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god! I uh, I was I think I'm I'm not livid anymore about it. I think I was livid for a good three hours mm-hmm. about how terrible. It is. But uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Continue. That's okay. <laughs> uh, Black Diamond Wrestling down in Benwood, West Virginia, and of course you can check out uh, the social media uh, Black Diamond Universe on Facebook and BDW Wrestling on the Twitter for more information about that. And it's uh, no, we don't have a PittsburghWrestling.com because that's not Pittsburgh. <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> indie wrestling dot uh, indie wrestling dot us yes. information as well so awesome all right guys i want to give a shout out to our friends at slice on broadway here before the break we can give lots of time here for mayhem mania because that feeling is going to get real weird uh <laughs> do you need to put put down some more cereal before uh uh mayhem mania i'm full are you good you're full okay uh, but shout out to our good <laughs> friends at slice on broadway at slice on broadway.com right here up the street Helping support Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for several years now. Uh, don't kick the door down, Dave Bodner. Uh, check them out kick if you're in town in and Beachview. <laughs> yes, push it in gently with your foot. Uh, <laughs> Carnegie, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. See them, them grow. Grow from one division, one Monday Night Raw of Beachview to the spinoffs of the SmackDowns and NXT and NXT UK. In my mind, the SmackDown is PNC Park, the NXT is uh, Carnegie, and then because it's all the way on the other city, the NXT UK is the East End. Uh, Sorg, yes. Sorg, let's be honest. The Pirates are 205 Live. Oh, that's right. <gasps> yeah, you're, you're giving right. the Pirates whoa, right. whoa, way too much credit. Whoa. As somebody who works in PNC Park, the Slice on Broadway in PNC Park is probably one of the best parts. Just saying. I'm not saying it isn't. The so Pirates 205 are. Live has the best wrestlers. Well, yes. Okay. The least watched. Well, at least... I, uh, I think it's apt. The Pirates would be uh, similar to Joe Rogers and Five Star Wrestling. No. Oh. <laughs> you, you know what the best part... I mean, That's a regional joke. <laughs> <laughs> at, at least the Pirates haven't traded the pizza joint, so that's good. That's good. <laughs> don't, Ronnie, don't tempt them. Don't listen to the Pirates. <laughs> at least the Pirates didn't show up to PNC Park and claim... That PNC Park uh, didn't allow them access when, meanwhile, the Pirates just didn't show up to PNC Park. I don't know what we're. I don't. I'm not we're, following we're make, my sports ball news. We're making a bunch of references to uh, very good, funny. Things. But either way, either way, 
go visit Slice on Broadway. Yeah, friends Slice on Broadway. It's and to help their global expansion, because obviously they've been expanding since we first talked about them. If uh, you got a Broadway in your town, I know we have friends out in the chat room from Seattle, from L.A., from Kansas City, and everywhere in between. Take a picture of your Broadway. Tweet PGH underscore Slice and say you want to Slice on your Broadway. We'll be back after this message and with OSHA Inc. here in the studio and Mayhem Mania, Mainstream Mike. Our mainstream Matt. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. not his name. Mainstream he Matt really is warming right. up in the corner to pitch hit us some mayhem mania. We'll be right back. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. And then maybe I'll start coming out to. I don't know. You can kind of see Matt. Crooked right? eyes. <laughs> <laughs> one's looking left and one's looking right. HBK's got crooked eyes. <laughs> That's right. Serenading us into the second half is Dan Sandwich of OSHA Inc. Ronnie Stark's with us. Tatiana Rose with us as well. We got a crew on the line. Lola, uh, Lola Bradbury. Brandon's out there from the KC. Mad Mike. And of course, presiding over the Mayhem Mania is Mainstream Matt. What, did I screw up your name again? I just, I, wait, is it is it Sandwich or Sandwich? It depends. Oh, a little bit. It, it's a little of both. Depends on what company. Whatever you're, you're feeling. No. Whatever you're gonna, feeling. I need to know. If it's in McKeesport, it's sandwich. Uh, if it's in West Virginia, it's sandwich. It might still be sandwich. Sa- sandwich. And if you're in Philly, it's gyro. And if we're in Beachview, <laughs> if we're in Beachview, uh, all right. Is it a hoagie or is it a sub? Listen, it's a sub. His title is Dan, late. Here, just, here, here just, okay. Let me grinder. let me put it this way. In, in my mich- in my system, it's labeled sandwich, but the title is still sandwich. I. All right, I just hit both of them. Ch- We're just gonna go with Dan. Yeah, it's just Dan. What yeah, yeah, one one name like Madonna? <laughs> one name, yeah. Sandwich. Dan is a hot dog a sandwich. I am really disappointed that for WrestleMania, like wherever they're holding it, they haven't come up with a Flow Rider witch, just because, or like a Pitbull witch. Yeah, like at this point, it's tradition. You have to put Flow Rider on. Is your mic off. <laughs> I'm not getting you on mic. right. Is it on? Love the mic. So Love the mic. Yeah, yeah, you gotta get on. Yeah, you got, you got, you got get on that mic. Mainstream Matt, what are we doing? You gotta get up on the mic, like just like yes, you know, yes. really get all the voices. Hey, hey everybody! Hey everybody! <laughs> hey everybody! Is that your sexy voice? <laughs> hey ladies! <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it's Roddy Starks here. <laughs> you guys ready for some wrestling? <laughs> okay. I'm, I, I'm not. What's up? I right. don't know how the main event's gonna top this next week. Are they are they bringing Liddy? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I want it so bad. Um, okay, deep breath. All right, let's stay in the moment. All right, this is Mayhem Mania, uh, friends. It's kind of a competitive thought experiment. We're trying to create the best WrestleMania card possible within the bounds of the current reality. So you, everyone we're working with, is coming in their current physical, mental, contractual, uh, intellectual, etc. State. Basically, they're coming as they are here in the real world with us so this isn't fantasy booking it's eh, reality booking uh think of yourself as vince mcmahon with unlimited resources and zero self-control and we're going all out this so year basically vince basically McMahon. vince mcmahon um <laughs> we have eight cards here uh, eight matches here on our undercard we're trying to graduate eight up into the super card to do so the matches that we create have to survive three rounds without being changed in any way so this is one round. Each of the five people here playing are going to make one change to a match or matches on this card. You can just get rid of a match entirely and bring in a whole new match with all new people. You can swap one for one. So if you want this one to go up there, you can just you know swap one for one like that. Um, you can add an extra tag team or an extra person, make you a three-way, four-way, um, however you want to do with that. Let your imagination run wild, but not too wild, but... Let your imagination run wild. You can't touch that one. That's locked in. That's the one match that graduated to the super card. Sorgatron created it. Elias versus Velveteen Dream. Good job, Sorg. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank so you. we're going to run through these eight matches, and I'm going to tell everyone that this week's players are Brandon, and then we're going to have Lola Bradbury, RWA color commentator, is going to be joining us, and then we'll go to the couch for Tatiana and Sandwich slash Sandwich. And Ronnie will bat clean up, and each of you will make 
we'll get one move. Very simple. And then we'll be on our way. Oh, yes. And I should have mentioned this also. Um, there's a list of people that you can't use. Uh, you see, uh, over the course of this game, we uh, reward people with certain things. And one thing we, we uh, do as a reward is we give them eliminators. So basically, it allows um, people to eliminate someone from being used at all in Mayhem Mania going forward this year. So I'm going to give you the list of people that you can't use. Um, and remember, this isn't my idea. These are the other people have eliminated these people. So don't blame me. Um, anyway, the, the names you cannot use are uh, Ric Flair, Jeff Jarrett, Drake Maverick, John Cena, Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar, Triple H, and Charlotte Flair. And Sorg, you are the, the one outstanding eliminator. Mm -hmm. Would you like mm -hmm. to use that on RoboCop, please? Uh, <laughs> please? <laughs> no, I will not use that on Colonel RoboCop just yet. But I do think it's strange that now, if you RoboCop... used it on Colonel RoboCop, did... <laughs> would regular RoboCop still be alive? I don't know. I don't know the All ruling right. on this. Like, Ric Flair and Colonel Ric Flair, like, is there still a, an opening there at that point? I, you're getting into a whole different genre of, like, Colonel Sanders inspired wrestlers, and I yes. don't know if we want to go there. No, no, probably not. Uh, if you can, yeah, it, just because you can create in 2K doesn't mean that we should yeah. do this. So, are you going like, to use your eliminator? Or I no? am not going to no. use my eliminator. See, he's going to hold on to it. Yes. You know what? I think I think there's someone on the card right now that he doesn't like because he can't use an eliminator on someone who's on the card right now. You got to wait mm -hmm. until they're off, mm -hmm. and then you can pounce on them like a jungle cat, and then you can take them out. So, let's run down the card, and then we'll bring in Brandon here. I think I've said enough. All right, here we go. Uh, first up, we've got Johnny Gargano versus Demon Finn Balor, created by Sorgatron. We've got the Triconics, Zelina Vega, Peyton Royce, and Billy Kay versus the Tri Pirates, Kyrie Sane, Io Shirai, and Asuka, created by Bobby F. J. Town. We've got Cassius Ono and Cesaro, yes, the Kings of Wrestling, versus Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic, right? Donovan. Donovan? Dominic? Dijakovic. The Monstars. Like created by Garza. Yeah. Uh, Ronda Rousey versus Rhea Ripley. Created by Kyle from Pit Fight. The Usos versus The Revival versus Boss Hug. Sasha and Bailey. Created by Mad Mike. The War Raiders and Sarah Logan versus Sanity. Just the guys. Created by Honey Badger. Nakamura versus Matt Riddle. Created by Cornell from Pit Fight. And finally, Seth Rollins versus Aleister Black. Created by Sam from Pit Fight. They were just here last week. That's why they're all over the place. So let's bring in the big dog, Brandon, and see what he's got in store for us. How you doing, Brandon? I'm all right. What would you like to do? I want to say in the uh, Seth Rollins match. We're going to add someone to the Seth Rollins match? Yes, what is that? Say Rus Rusev. No, Ricochet. Ricochet. Oh, Ricochet. Okay, nice. are we adding Ricochet to make it a three-way, yes. or are we... Okay, so it's a three... Okay, three-way. Awesome. Uh, Excellent. That sounds like an interesting matchup. So that would be Seth Rollins versus Aleister Black versus Ricochet, correct? Yes. Awesome. All right, thanks, Brandon. Let's bring in... Lola. Do you want me to write for you? No, it's way more, no, it's more entertaining this way. <laughs> yeah. it's a lot more fun. You need to focus on what you're going to do with your match. Just let me do. do. Oh, you already know what you're going to do? Yeah. You should have a backup match in mind because it's probably not going to be ready by the time you come up. Um, <laughs> all right, let's bring in. Hello, Lola. Ooh, so, my match, I've been thinking about this for a while. First of all, if you're going to bring in a match, which one are you going to get rid of? Oh, I'm going to get rid of the Ronda Rousey match. Oh, thank you. Ooh. As you should. Ooh. I can't make an R. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was one week away from retirement. It wasn't even oh, close. Man. What do you got, Lola? <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. And I want to replace it with Trent Seven mm -hmm. versus. Oh, I blanked. Damn it. Oh, I had this set. Um, Trent Seven. Versus maybe we can help you. Is he British? Colonel Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had it. Oh, damn is it, it. Is um, it Bart Gun? Hold on, one sec. Um, 
Oh, I can't. I should have is, is he bigger than a bread box? No, Male or female? Gen 7 versus um, is it Dean Ambrose. Whoa. Whoa. Dean. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Dean's farewell match. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a good one. Trent Seven's the male. Hmm. Wow. Dig it. Thanks, Lola. Who's next? Okay. I, I was waiting for Roman no. Reigns is back in play now, right? Oh, yeah. Roman Reigns is so very much in play. All you're right. Tatiana, you're on. So we're going to eliminate Roman Reigns. Uh, Mr. Sandwich, Sandwich, you're on deck. Okay. So we're going to eliminate Roman Reigns. Please <laughs> talk into the microphone. Do you mean like this? Just like this. <laughs> 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 love um, the microphone. Hmm. Sork says, "Love the microphone. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> don't be afraid of it." <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> that was awkward, Sork. Okay, so I do want to add a match, but I, ah, oh, man, I, I like most of the matches on there, mm -hmm. except for mm -hmm. I'm going to take out. Usos versus Revival versus Boss Hog. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, Mad Mike! For that. <laughs> you know? And you were worried about me. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that, that vest looks hideous. And I'm going to replace it <laughs> How with... How dare you, sir? And Making I'm going personal. to replace it with the Iconics. Can't. No? Nope, I got them up here. Ah, dang it. Told you you need to have a plan B. Okay. All, right. All right, so New Day. There we go. Versus. I love how you see how effortlessly she transitioned to the her other. And she's like, because okay, no it problem. was supposed to be Iconics versus New Day. That's why. New so. Day versus. Uh, that's an excellent idea, by the way. I know, right? Uh, um, I would have been like, hmm, handicap match well, seems like a fair fight anyway. Yeah. That's okay. Hmm, New Day. Well, now that she's off, how about Nikki Cross and Rhea Ripley? Okay. All right. Wait. Okay. So are we doing three New Days versus Nikki Cross and Rhea Ripley? I mean, that's cool. So. Uh, no. no you want to find a third one? No. Um, New Day being Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. Okay. Here we go. Uh, that, What's your problem with Big team E? Speed that's okay. Never mind. <laughs> team Speed Force. No, seriously. That's what they're called. Team Speed Force. Bill, I'm writing. That's all right. Uh, we can we can I, hear the, just, the squeak of the mark. I'm just upset. Every year I try to book intergender and it doesn't work. Well, this 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 got in there. Can someone play taps from Mad Mike's match? Wow. wow. Play the tiniest violin wow. from Mad Mike's match. Whoa. All right, Tadiana. Good wow. job. Okay. Appreciate it. Know, um, all right. Sandwich, out, sandwich. Like you're up. Turn. Ronnie's on deck. <laughs> All right. All right. Sandwich. I'm, I'm cutting a match. Uh oh. Right, let's do it. And I'm sure it's a fan favorite match, but I hate these two people with a passion. Oh, oh dear. No. Like Wait. literally, if I could cut two people out of WWE's roster, it'd be these two people. Oh. So bye bye. You mean like Johnny a... Wrestling? Oh. Bye bye Finn Balor. Jeez, oh man. I hate those guys. Can't Whoa. stand them. Can't stand them. They make me not want to watch Raw anymore. Wow. <laughs> But it's okay. We're replacing this match with money. Money? Money? Yeah. Okay, money. Bring him back. The Sky Walker, Shit Talker, Enzo Amore. Okay. Uh, <laughs> mm. No? Is that not legal? I'll allow it. It's uh, for the moment, yes. It's, Look, it's can Vince McMahon offer Enzo Amore fifty million dollars to come work a match at WrestleMania? Hell yeah. Yes, I think it, it can happen. I think he he's okay offering him fifteen dollars and he'll do a match. I think at Enzo would take it. All right, go on. Yeah. So we got to put Enzo in there with someone who can carry him through the match. Enzo can carry himself when it comes to mic time, but we need him to work with somebody who is good in the ring. So put him in there with AJ. <laughs> All right, <laughs> About time. What? <laughs> AJ Styles. <laughs> Sorg, let's get a poll up on the uh, Twitter I was machine. Say How many Ryan, stars could AJ Styles get out of Enzo? Can you write AJ? Because there are far too many guys with the Styles name in wrestling right now. I was going to say Daniel Bryan for that, but uh, with him being a heel right now, I figured Enzo heel AJ. Baby face. I don't know. Enzo managed to make, turn the Miz face for one night. I love Enzo. The guy's money. 
my other one that I remember that when uh, Ms. and Maurice met, announced their pregnancy and Enzo Amore came out and like immediately started dissing them and the crowd turned to the Miz and Maurice face. <laughs> literally one night they went right back to being heels, but it was beautiful. The reason this will work is because the, the two million people that still watch Raw every week hate Enzo. Mm-hmm. Mega over as a heel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The two million people a week that watch Raw love AJ Styles. Put them in the ring together. It works. Hey, no complaints here. I'm all about watching Enzo get beaten up. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hold uh, on, we need to give him the Enzo hair. Who? AJ Styles? No, we got to give Dan Sandwich the Enzo hair. Oh, yeah. I don't know where it is. Though. I know where it is. Okay. Go find it. Ronnie. Okay. Ronnie. Ronnie. I'll wear the Enzo hair. All right. You got I, this figured out here? I do. All right. Since uh, since Dan took one of my favorite wrestlers off the card, I'm putting one of my favorite wrestlers back on the card. There we go. That's the uh, spirit. We are eliminating the War Raiders match. Oh, dear. There are not a lot of surviving matches tonight. Yes. Oh. I'm like, are we ever going to use this again? And you gave me a reason. All right. We're going to two... Uh, Tommaso Ciampa. All right. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Versus the demon Finn Balor. Nope. And it's going to be, because people call Ciampa the goddamn devil. So yeah, uh, so we're going to no, say the a devil a... versus the demon. There you go. Oh, I, know. I dig it. Good, Good times. Every time I hear someone say Tommaso Ciampa, I think back to PWG when Chuck Taylor called him Tomato Chomper. That's tomato awesome. Chomper. That's such a great insult. I love it. How you doing? <laughs> oh jeez, he looks good. Oh, oh man, wow. where's he going? Where's he going? <laughs> He's doing the dance. This is what happens. He's doing, doing the, the dance. Brooks into Mayhem Mania. Oh this no. Is what happens. All right, Sorgi. <laughs> See, I told you that wouldn't take too long. Let's uh, run down the. Uh, All right. Let's run down the uh, the card as we have it right now. Uh, we have. Um, <clears throat> Enzo Amore versus AJ Styles, created by Dan Sandwich Sandwich. Ooh. We have the uh, Triconics versus the Tri Pirates, created by Bobby. The Kings of Wrestling versus uh, Leon Dijakovic, created by Garza. Trent Seven versus Dean Ambrose, created by Lola. Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods versus Nikki Cross and Rhea Ripley, created by Ooh. Tatiana. Tommaso Ciampa versus Finn Balor, created by Ronnie Starks. Nakamura versus Riddle, created by Cornell from Pit Fight. And finally, Brandon brings us Seth Rollins versus Aleister Black versus Rick O'Shea. Can you imagine if that was actually you know, a match? Holy that shit. would be so fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, Brandon, Brandon makes good matches. Matt? Yes, sir. I think I know what I want to do. Uh-oh. You want to use your eliminator? I think I know what I want to do. Uh-oh. Oh, no, sure. baby. Just to, make sure, just to make sure something doesn't happen. Because I still hold grudges. I want to use my Eliminator. Oh, no. On Bobby Fish. Perfect! Yes! Woohoo! All right. Good time. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Good yes. stuff. All right. Just, a, just oh, in case anybody gets any bright ideas in the next few weeks. You've just nuked Bobby everyone's Fish. Undisputed Era match idea. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. What did you have against Robert Fish? I'll have to tell you mm, sometime. Long story. Maybe sometime we'll talk, off air. Maybe we'll talk about it on <laughs> Talking mayhem mania coming up here on the uh wrestling mayhem show youtube channel um oh i'm not sure who i'm gonna have for a guest this week i wonder if uh hey lola you want to hang around and do talking mayhem mania yes all right excellent lola will be my guest there you go perfect yes. really not the not the man with the hair hey, wait what are you what's with your socks he's got, he's got rocker's modern life socks on right now. <laughs> Dude, that somehow completely fits with that hair. That is awesome. Laundry day is a very dangerous day. <laughs> Check that out. That's do I stink? Yeah. That is fantastic. R B C Y C L E recycle. So random. Oh baby. Oh baby. Oh baby. Somehow I have to transition that. Hey, if you don't study Mayhem Mania, then you're doomed to repeat history. And thankfully, Professor Buzzkill. He is here helping to make history fun to learn. Our friend, our podcast friend, Professor Buzzkill at ProfessorBuzzkill.com. We're looking to get him on in the coming months here and talk some wrestling history. Uh, but in the meantime, go check him out. He talks about uh, a lot of fun things. Um, uh, recently, uh, well, with the walls and what if they work and things like that. Go check out ProfessorBuzzkill.com. Uh, part of, uh, well, no, not part of our network, but uh, friends of the network over there. 
So uh, with that, it's time to find out what did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that there's for real a blind wrestler out there, and I want to freaking find this guy. Does anybody have a name? <laughs> Producer Missy went home. <laughs> so, what the? I got this Google shit going on. Here. You got the, you got you're on it. You're on the Google. I'm on this. <laughs> Type Hope blind this wrestler. The, the one the blind wrestler and see what happens, oh, right? Got this blind wrestler <laughs> from UK. You sold our bird to a blind kid. <laughs> <laughs> what movie was I that? I like how my Dumb my phone, Dumb Dumb, of course. My phone Blow switched to blind. Blind kid? That, yeah. that now he's right beside you. Well, uh, blind wrestler <laughs> from UK. I'm not gonna lie. On my view of story screen. The I can see the top of the Enzo More wig, and it looks like Hey Arnold, <laughs> just from the top of the wig. A little bit. Oh. It's, he's old Nickelodeon over there. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Mad Enzo Mike. Enzo is the original stupid kid. Mad Mike, what did you <laughs> learn from wrestling this week? <laughs> uh, I learned that when people pick up their pens to write things, sometimes it goes really, really weirdly. That road dog, that road dog action on on SmackDown. I'm telling you, uh, Doug Williams. Doug Williams. Yeah, that's somebody else. No, I know. No, it's blind wrestler. Sp- hold on, blind wrestler, UK from fighting with my family. D- no, Doug Williams is not a blind wrestler. Here's he what may I have been, unless there's he may more than one. TNA, Here's but that doesn't I mean you can't I see it on Monday Night Raw. Raw. Oh, that's right. He was like the British guy from that. Yeah. Uh, Lola, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that the biggest thing that happened on Monday Night Raw was Batista's nose ring. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, it's homage to Blue Tista. Blue, T- Blue Tista Blue nose ring? Tista. Yes. <laughs> wow. Uh, Brandon, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? <laughs> that we have nothing nice. <laughs> yeah, we can't, we can't have, have nothing nice. <laughs> we can't have anything nice. Awesome. To uh, to Mayhem Mania Central, uh, Matt. What did uh, you learn? I, from I learned that if you're a tag team champion in a WWE, you suck. <laughs> yeah, because you lose all the time. Holy crap! Yeah, they went down tonight too. Really? Yeah, the Usos. Yeah, no, the uh, wait, with Cesaro in the bar. Oh, wait, wait, they're not the champs anymore. No, no they're, they're not, not the champs. champs. Well, you know what? The Rebel will lose all the time. Yeah, so my probably. statement stands. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. OSHA Inc., what did you learn? Who wants to go first? Good. I learned that the biggest pop of the night in uh, on Monday Night Raw was when Sting came out and completely kayfabed Seth Rollins. That was funny. Skip the handshake. <laughs> that was yeah. Great. Those, did did those... you guys see we got a main event mafia moment there for a second? Did we? Yeah. Oh, we did. Sting and Rude. Sting and Rude. Ooh. And Angle, too, right? Was Angle in the... Can we just bring back main event mafia in WWE? No, we getting nostalgic no, for TNA not, I mean, factions now. We have yeah, enough forty-year-olds yeah. in wrestling. <laughs> oh, don't we get the forty-year-olds. What are you going to do? Chad Gable is going to be left in the orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, He's ready, willing, and unable. <laughs> Tatiana, what did you learn from wrestling? Uh, pull the mic to you. Pull the mic to you. There you go. I learned that even if. The cake survives the show. It will still be destroyed afterwards. <laughs> a cake is not safe in a wrestling ring. Nope. Nope. Ronnie Starks, what'd you learn? I've learned that Kevin Owens can do whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> Including he can Amen. do promos eating popcorn and he still gets a title shot. That's right. <laughs> Out of nowhere. And Kofi Kingston. Yeah. Yeah. It's passed over. I'm not going to lie. So I was upstairs sitting at my Google Hangouts, and I heard Kevin Owens' theme downstairs on the TV, and I ran down the stairs screaming, Yes, boy! I just, oh. <laughs> 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 yes, I, I also boy. think I would get a haircut soon so I can be the American Kevin Owens again. Yes, bring back the American Kevin Owens. Oh, I also want to say that, uh, sorry, I don't know if you remember last year, I had a dream match in Mayhem Mania. Mm-hmm. Alistair Black versus Nakamura. We got it tonight oh, for like shit. 90 seconds. And, we and it was good. Oh, well, uh, go check your DVRs, but. I don't have to. Oh, I definitely DVR. I definitely DVR'd SmackDown. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty short clip. It should fit in a GIF, I think. Um, yeah, I'm sure it'll be on go for that long. Sure. It, 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 um, it validated my uh, desire to see that match. Good, good. 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 Tina Keys learned that the only Vince can make a junior drop his first F bomb. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Jeez. What was what was it last night? Uh junior um oh junior um eleven year old Tina's kid uh got to see Jerry Ryan 
Joey Ryan different uh for the first time jerry ryan <laughs> that would, that would was from the movie um jerry ryan for the first time and just had a lot of questions oh really yes <laughs> one um, of these weeks we're gonna have to just have like tina and me just discussing like what our kids think about wrestling because oh. my nine-year-old for some goddamn reason is like all about noam dar right now wow. like he's walking around doing it's the, the intros accent. and everything yeah, i don't know what got into him but uh, i mean he's, he's cool dude true. but this it's, needs to happen. It's definitely <laughs> how he used to say, Alicia Fox. Fox. Kyle Turner learned that someone deleted Fat Hardy and Drax hates birthdays. Is that a reference to the uh, to the um, to Anthem, the big evil Al up in Canada deleting the uh, Global Force Wrestling out. TV tapings? Oh, what? yeah, I heard about that. Wait, wait, what happened? So, uh, there's some litigation going on. I'm going to be paraphrasing, so pardon me if okay. I get this wrong. But there's some, litig- there's some pending litigation still going on between Jarrett and Anthem over Global Force. Remember when they went to Vegas yeah, they a few to- years ago? And they did like 14 hours of TV tapings and Bobby Roode won their championship and everything. And I think they released those as like one-night stand specials? Yeah, no, something like that. No, they no, never did. They never did. They, I think they, they ended up on the... Did they end up on the Global Wrestling they Network? They advertised them. They anyway. might have ended up on the network thing, but they never like released them, I don't think. So anyway, I, I mean, they when they, they're doing and their and litigation and they're, you know, they're exchanging their, you know, their discovery, discovery and, yeah. and doing all that stuff. And it comes to uh, be that Anthem owns up to the fact that they basically... They purged those tapings from their database, basically, because they needed the space to record something else. So they deleted what, the they master. What, they used the studio they wrestling del- excuse? <laughs> <laughs> they deleted the master recordings of the original Global Force Wrestling TV tapings. <laughs> they they nice. used the uh, the old excuse that you had when you had the blank VCR, v- VHSs. Yeah, I forgot, that. I forgot that. I forgot that. I forgot to put oh, the tape over I'm the sorry, tab. That was your copy of Terminator 2. I recorded over it with SmackDown. <laughs> oh, yes. my bad. Carrie, Carrie learned that you shouldn't bring people up from NXT <laughs> and have them beating people on WWE who are supposed to be the champs. All right. <laughs> Dave Potter, Tell You Shutter Podcast. I learned that the storyline for Raw for the women uh, works for the men on SmackDown. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Alex Carr has learned that Woken Matt Hardy has fallen asleep again. What is happening with Matt Hardy this week? Matt uh, Hardy he, he showed up on SmackDown. He showed up on SmackDown tonight. Oh, tonight? He wrestled. Oh, shit. What? <laughs> I yeah. thought he was retired. Hardy Boys nope. reunion. Hardy, yeah, Hardy Boys reunion. Just I'll check you, your. I thought you yeah. broke his ass. No, no, no. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> Tatiana, just check your DVR when you get home. It's there. Shit. Is. Also, <laughs> can I point out when Jeff Hardy does like the hip dance thing, he always does it off beat, and it bothers me constantly. That's oh, that's Lola, the beat in his head. He's really high. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's North Carolina. Really, yeah, he, he definitely really is really high. high. Oh, jeez. Uh, Bobby of J-Town learned that Jinder Mahal challenged anyone who was invited to Ric Flair's birthday party, and his dad is going to get him a bigger bouncy castle than Ric Flair's party has. Also, Raw is booked by an insane man. First of all, nobody has a bigger bouncy house than we do. That's right. You guys did have a bouncy house. We need to bring that what? Back. Yeah. How can I get in on this? Yeah, that was yeah. Um, come to Black Diamond. Come, we have a bouncy house. Come to, that's that's a come to Black Diamond. We have a bouncy house. Should be like your slogan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll get butts and seats. Can, can we? Can you make a, a gift or a banner that says "Come to Black Diamond"? We have bouncy houses. We we'll have to go grab that footage and see. I don't know. It was in a dark corner. It was. <laughs> the, best, you know, the best part is like so. I would put, I would come and put the hard cam up on the table on the side where like nobody's gonna bother it over here. Nothing ever happens on this side of the building. Not and then. Was like, hey, you can't leave that there. I'm like, what are you talking about? That thing's going to inflate. I'm like, what? This pile of whatever over here? And I've realized it's a damn bouncy castle that's going to inflate in the middle of a match. I could not get, I could not get that bouncy castle. No, they were yelling at us like, it's deflated. Get out. Let me just say this, and this is why I stand by Enzo being on that card. This is why I stand by Enzo being on this card is because you. (laughs) I can't take you seriously. Everyone can vouch for it. I can't wrestle for shit. I get over with gimmick. Enzo gets over with gimmick. This is what people want to see. That's what makes people return. His and name you know, is... If people want to see Enzo okay. get shot by Walter. That's what people want to see. It's okay, Dan. I can't manage for shit, so it's all right. <laughs> all That's right. me putting myself over. <laughs> wow. Character-wise, anyway. Um... <laughs> I'm trying to find more of what I learned in here. I don't know. Yeah. 
Black Diamond Wrestling, we provide child care in the form of a bouncy house. <laughs> there you go. You probably get over with that. OSHA approved. Um, <laughs> OSHA approved. Guys, holy shit. This was a, sh- this was a show. Uh, thank you, OSHA Inc., for joining us. Absolutely. Where can people find you online and stuff? Who wants to go first? Blank stairs. <laughs> Blank stairs. <laughs> you have Twitter. Listen, you have, have into Twitter. the mic. Into, into the, the mic. mic. Into, into the, the mic. mic. I have a Twitter. It is at Miss Tatiana Rose without the I in Miss. So M I S M S S Tatiana Rose. That's right. Dan Sandwich? On Twitter at MTO Sandwich. Not Sandwich, Sandwich. Sandwich. Yes. And you can follow me at Starks Wrestling on the Twitter machine. There you go. And of course, there'll be. Johnny uh, has quality content. Yes, it. I have quality content Aww. on my Instagram. <laughs> oh, that you can follow everybody here. Of course, uh, uh, Lola uh, on the commentary for Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and also uh, 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 over with Rise Wrestling as well. Rise with a Y. Yes. As as you do, I understand that came up in like I, I understand it's happening in text messages around bookings these days. <laughs> I hear it through the grapevine, so um, I'm glad that we got that out there. Um, so and it's a show title: MC OSHA Inc. Child Care. Hmm. I don't know about that one. Uh, so that, <laughs> gonna have to yeah, say no that, to that one. That, that, that'll look good on the four or five. That'll, yeah, that'll get weird. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Mike 483 on the Twitter. And YouTube.com slash Poppy. That's right. Brandon, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And, of course, Mainstream Matt1T on the Twitter. Thank you, sir. And look out for Talking Mayhem Mania. You better look out. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Next week, we have the main event. Followed the next week, we do have comedian Matt Light and, uh, for a moment, professional boxer Matt Light as well. Uh, we'll uh, schedule to join us. Uh, we'll see how his knock knock jokes are. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. We did it again! We did it again! Yeah! Woo! This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.